I know that uh, you know you spent all this time getting to know individual taxation, and you're finally your brain is now finally speaking the language, and now I'm going to throw something almost completely new at you. Um, all right, so let's let me talk about just a little bit about um, how partnerships are formed from a legal perspective. You have we need to keep a distinction between a legal entity and a tax entity. So two different things. Um, because there are tax entities out there that aren't really recognized for legal purposes and there are legal entities out there that aren't really recognized for tax purposes. Um, when I talk about a legal entity, it means it's some sort of organization that is formed under the laws of a state. Usually the Secretary of State of any particular state is the one that handles any um, company organizational formations. For a partnership, you don't have to do anything to form a partnership. All you have to do is go in business with another, part, another person. Partnership is always going to be at least two people, and it could be a husband and wife. Husband and wife together, remember they can't they can't have a sole proprietorship together because a sole proprietorship is only one person. But if a husband and wife go into business together, they automatically form a partnership. It's just it, you don't even have to do anything. You don't have to to register a name, you don't have to have an employer ID number. Well, eventually you will. Um, but you automatically form a partnership. And if you don't do anything else, like you don't choose to incorporate that partnership, make it into an S corporation or a C corporation, then it stays a partnership and it becomes taxed like a partnership as well. And therefore would require a partnership tax return. Okay, so anytime, like I said, anytime two people go into business together, they automatically form a partnership. Um, now, there are certain things that should be done from a legal standpoint when you do form a partnership. You should have, um, well, you wouldn't have articles of organization or anything like that because that's that would be with a, um, a an LLC. But you should have some sort of partnership agreement. Partnership agreement is uh, what all the partners essentially, how they agree to run the partnership how they agree to share in the profits and the expenses, how they agree to, it details their agreement on how the partnership's going to be run. That's a legal thing. IRS doesn't require a partnership agreement. The state doesn't even require a partnership agreement, but from a practical standpoint, from a legal standpoint, a partnership agreement should be entered into amongst partners. Um, ask pretty much anybody who's ever been a member of a partnership, if it goes south, it's worse than a divorce. <laughs> because the, the arguments over who owes what and who owns what are can be pretty intense. So it's always really important to have some sort of partnership agreement. Now, like I said, if you don't do anything else, it's automatically taxed as a partnership. Um, if, however, the members of a partnership decide that they want to be a corporation, then they actually have to take steps with the state to incorporate their business. Okay. Um, I know this is this is complex, um, and you really don't. We really probably don't need to get into the weeds that much, but I just want to make clear that there are all these different types of entities and. Uh, the IRS recognizes some but doesn't recognize others. The state recognizes some but doesn't recognize others. So you've got these two kind of parallel systems at play when we're talking about businesses. Okay, um, Partnerships, sometimes you'll hear these terms, limited liability company, limited liability partnership, limited partnership, these are legal entities. 
What these do is they provide, well, it's, it's right in the name, they provide liability protection for the owners of these either companies or partnerships. So from a legal standpoint, what it does is it, it places a, a legal barrier between the partner and the business. Without that type of legal barrier, if somebody were to sue the partnership, and I don't mean, I don't mean like you've got a, you've got a, a physical building, somebody comes in and trips on your, on your property and sues you for that. Um, but I'm talking about if you have some sort of, well, actually that's it, that is what I'm talking about. I guess that would be one, one example. Um, if somebody sues the partnership, they can't, and there is this legal barrier, they cannot go after the individual's assets. So you own a partnership with one other person and somebody, uh, somebody trips on your sidewalk um, going into your business and they sue the partnership. Without some sort of legal protection, what happens is they can go after not only the partnership assets, but your personal assets as well. But setting up some sort of legal barrier in the form of an LLC, an LLP, or an LP, I don't think, we don't really have LPs in Iowa, but we do have LLPs, limited liability partnerships. By setting that up with the state, then that provides a, a, a protection barrier between the individual and the partnership itself, okay? But these things, like I said, the IRS doesn't recognize these as separate types of entities. You can be an LLC and you could be a sole proprietorship. Sole proprietors can, can form LLCs. You can be a partnership, um, or you could be an LLC and you could be an S corporation. So it's, it, there's a lot of overlap in these different organizations. Um, and I probably have gone into way too much depth that more than you need, um, but just to kind of give you a little bit of background about um, these different types of entities. And so when we talk about corporations too in the next chapter and S corporations, we're kind of gonna go back to that a little bit, that whole um, concept of legal entities versus tax entities, okay? Just a little.